already. Let's head over here. It's the Arc Portal. Okay. This is a very interesting room. It says, as an action, we can move your character any explored room in the tomb. So we can just use our mental energy to teleport to any place we've already explored. Interesting. Okay, there's a nice way to jump around the levels as well. Okay, now we've got an adventure icon as well. And this might be a positive effect. Let's see how the story develops. You just couldn't resist tinkering with this device. It's an unknown mechanism, probably thousands of years old. When you activate it, it showers you with some sort of liquid. Now it's asking for a mythos check, just one success. Well, mythos is right up our street. For the mythos of five, we're looking for just one success. And yeah, we've got two fives. Okay, that'll do it. You suddenly feel fantastic. That sense of foreboding from being in the tomb dissipates and your eyes feel warm. You look in a nearby mirror and see that your eyes are glowing green. Plus one courage, and we gain the lucky trait. Wow, <laughs> we've got glowing green eyes. Okay, so let's grab lucky. Here we are. And plus one courage. That's good, that takes us to plus three. We're nearly in bonus territory. Okay, Lucky says, pass all checks on a four, five, or six. Excellent. So fours now become successes for us, I like it. Now back to McPhee, we're gonna run that combat again. So it was three plus four, that's seven dice. Looking for fives and sixes, remember. Actually, I might. No, let's do it, not might. I'm going to spend an audacity. Let's make fours a success as well. Okay, here we go. All right, we've got a few fours, a two, a three, and a critical miss. Critical miss isn't doing anything against this doppelganger, which is useful. Okay, so we've got four successes. His combat is three, so we don't take any damage. And his arm was one, so that's three damage on him. Four plus three, that's seven. Okay, he's got three health left. Can we do three more damage next time? I hope so. Okay, let's do Heidi's final action. And I think we will search this room. So if it's on red, let's roll. It's a five. A five on red. Oh, gives us a treasure and spawn one base creature. So we get an item, which is an enchanted blade. One base creature, which is a revolutionary poltergeist. Wow, he looks quite tough for her anyway. But the blade looks all right. Plus three combat, plus one to all checks. It's a two-handed weapon. Uh, succeeds on a four, five, or six in combat. Pretty bad timing, though, because... <laughs> that was Heidi's final action. Let's see, that rotates around to green. I don't really want to fight that poltergeist on my own. I might use my Necronomicon. Uh, this doesn't take an action. It doesn't get spent. But it allows me to summon a creature to control. But it does say you can only control one creature at a time. It says I do a check of my... Knowledge plus Mythos, right? Mythos plus Knowledge, and I need three successes to summon a basic. Five successes to summon an Elite. Given I'm lucky at the moment... 
four checks on a four, five, or a six. So I'm feeling pretty happy. Let's just roll. Uh, how many is it? Ten dice. Ten dice is good. Let's roll. I've only got eight, so let's roll five first. Okay, I've got two successes there. Um, yeah, that's not so good. And then five more. Come on, I'm looking for three. There's a success on a four. There's a success on a five. A five and a four. Yeah, that's more than enough. That's six successes I summon an elite. Let's see what we get. It's a werewolf. Nice. This werewolf is now under our control. When I do combat, you may roll the creature's combat score, which is 7, plus your mythos, which is 5, that's 12. If you take damage, the creature absorbs the damage until destroyed, and you take any over damage. You may only control one creature at a time. So I've got now a strength, a uh, combat strength, 12 werewolf fighting on my behalf. I don't know about you, but I suddenly feel the <laughs> Dupont is pretty awesome. Okay, let's uh, take McPhee's final action. We're rolling his seven dice once more. Because we're going to combat once more. We're looking for three hits, so we want... We roll four successes, don't we? One, two, three... Oh, three successes. I've got a four, a three, a three, and a one. So that's no damage on me, two on him. He's on nine damage, just one health left. We've run out of actions. It didn't pay off, so we've got one more battle to go. Let's see. What happens? Okay. Our card is frozen in time. Tomb effect. At the end of this tomb phase, immediately draw and resolve one additional tomb card. Oh dear. Two, move creatures. Only creatures that don't share a room with an adventurer are going to move. So that's the spirit, uh, the stone spirit of Armek. And he has a movement of one, this top figure here. And we can't go this way, that's only a half door. So one space towards the nearest adventurer. Uh, they don't get affected by traps, room traps, except those placed by adventurers. They can move from room to room, uh, level to level. They can't use things like the teleport, they can't use ropes, like this rope here that lets you travel up and down between levels. Um, they can use the stairs. As it goes at the moment, Fee's closest anyway, and tidy has got her second ability, Life and Death, which says base monsters will not move toward or do combat with you during the tomb phase. So, yeah, she's not going to be the target of any attacks anyway. Heidi Dupont's pretty tough, uh, despite her low skills. Right, these guys aren't going to move. Next up, we do creature combat. Now, once more, we can try and evade if we wish by doing our dexterity check. If you succeed, you can end the combat immediately and move to an adjacent room. We then do our regular lose courage if it's the first time you've engaged in combat with this creature. So, McPhee isn't losing any courage here. Choose our weapons and armor. We're going to choose the same as before. Um, and everything's the same here, uh, with the exception that we don't get the outnumber bonus if we did outnumber during the tomb phase. So it's going to be seven dice. We're looking for three successes to avoid taking any damage. And we've got one critical success. Ouch. We're going to take two health damage. So our health goes down from 12 to 10. We've got no base successes. So zero minus one takes us down to zero because we can't go below zero. Add on the critical successes. See how important this is? Gives us one damage on the double ganger, which is enough to kill him. 
which means we are awarded the five soul shards. Good stuff. Meanwhile then, over in the Ark Room, we got the werewolf versus the poltergeist. So it was seven plus uh, the mythos, so 12 dice. Let's roll the six. Ooh, horrible. I've got three ones, a five, a four, and a three. So I've got one success. I'm guessing lucky doesn't work. I'm going to go for the thematic idea here. You know, I can't turn fours into fives because it's the werewolf fighting the poltergeist, not the other way around. Uh, not me. Pass all checks on a four for. Oh, this isn't a check anyway. This is, well, this is a combat check, isn't it? No, it's a combat roll. Okay. Um, one success. I could use Audacity to re-roll everything. Well, I do have Spirit Sandeep Singh. Reroll all ones rolled. Let's put these three ones aside. Um, no, I'll, just, I'll just keep three tokens. These are the three ones that I've got. And one success. Alright, let's roll my second roll. Six. Take us to the full 12. Okay, we've got a few more successes here. One, two, two critical successes. All right, that's okay. Yeah, I'm going to use Siddhar Sandeep Singh's ability. Turn him to reroll all ones. He refreshes during upkeep. We've got three ones. So I'm going to re-roll those. Uh, it's a two, three, and a four. Okay, that didn't help us. Okay, that's our final results. So we got a base. Uh, sorry, for his combat of three, we've got five successes. He doesn't wound the werewolf. The werewolf does three base minus zero armor. One, two, three, four, five. That's five five damage. That's enough to kill the poltergeist. The werewolf did the damage, which means I don't think we get the full reward. It just says that we gain half our courage back. If you defeat a monster, you know the, the courage that you lose, and we lost two courage. So we should have lost two courage and then gained one back. But we do get the three soul shards because we controlled the creature that did the killing. Next, we spawn creatures. So one on level one, one on level two. Just basic. There aren't any red rooms down here, so we don't have to spawn. And it's just one up here, so spawn, and it's gonna be oh, another poltergeist. Let's put him up here. Okay, next, upkeep. So we haven't used the pistol, the pistol's gone away. We roll for lucky. Oh, it's a five. We're okay. We roll for the werewolf. Uh, join up, keep. It says make a knowledge check. We lose uh, we lose control of the creature if we fail. And we're looking for two successes. Okay, we've got five knowledge. Two successes. Yeah, we got them. Okay, no problem there. Uh, now fearless. One die. Lose it on a one. It's a four. We're good. Um, everyone searches. Rotate one. There's red to green for McPhee, green to yellow for Heidi. And then the comic track goes up one to number two. Uh, now we've got a resolve and another one. Ouch. Black ice, white death. Oh, take double damage from creatures and effects this phase, ouch. Move creatures and then creature combat. So this stone spirit's heading over 
here and the poltergeist down here. And there's no creature combat. Then we spawn two on level one. So let's see, we've got an undead raptor pack and a quest anaconda. I think we'll put the anaconda here and then the raptor pack we'll place it the lords of the day and this one says swarm x equals three these guys move in packs they move in swarms so we place swarm tokens next to them three because x equals three and their combat rating is then x its health is four yeah, so every time we hit four, we take away a swarm. Once all three are gone, that's the whole pack gone. With the anaconda, this one says that we gain a treasure item when we kill it. So he's guarding a treasure. Uh, nothing on level two, because there's no red rooms. Then we do upkeep. So yeah, we're going to have to check this stuff again. Because these all should be refreshed. So let's check fearless. One die. It's a three. We're good. We'll check lucky. It's a five. Now we'll check uh, the werewolf. So far, uh, five knowledge. We're looking for two successes. And we got three. Excellent. Um, search tokens move again. And then the comet track up one, so we're up to three after just two turns. Well, we got away with that one quite easily in the end. The adventure is really hotting up, and there's a lot of creatures. It's going to be tricky for McPhee to fight his way through this and perhaps try and join back up with Heidi. I do hope, though, that you've really got a feel for the game. We do need to keep exploring trying to find those scenario triggers so that we can get those free items. There's still a heck of a lot of story in this adventure. Thanks for watching. See you next time.